welcome to our Chromebook tips and device training. Um, I'm sorry that we weren't able to do this in person. Hopefully you can still get some of the information you need for using a Chromebook with your students next school year. So initially this training was really geared towards our high school teachers and high school staff because incoming freshmen will be getting Chromebook devices instead of the usual Dell HP laptops. Um, but really this training is for anyone who wants to know a little bit more about a Chromebook because a lot of our other students use them as well. All of our middle school students use Chromebooks as are our first grade through sixth grade elementary students too. So it might just be something helpful for you to participate in. So to get to the slides, they are linked here. You type that into your browser, it will take you to a short link of my slideshow. So feel free to make your own copy of it, pull it up, follow along, whatever you need to do. So goals for this session are to learn some of the helpful keyboard shortcuts and hacks for using Chromebooks efficiently and effectively. There are some slight differences with the touchpad, the mouse touchpad on a Chromebook versus a typical laptop Windows device. Um, and some of the keyboard shortcuts on here might just even help you use your Windows device as well. Um, and then to practice applying your Chromebook skills in a series of tasks. So this is very hands-on. If at any point in time you need to pause the video to test something on your Chromebook, to play around, I strongly recommend doing that. So you can kind of get that hands-on experience that you would traditionally get if the session would have been given in person. And we're doing this again so we can best support our learners. So we get a feel for how the technology can be used effectively in our learning environment and how we can use Chromebooks in a way that removes barriers instead of creating more barriers for our students. So first of all, to get started with this presentation and just Chromebooks in general, um, in the presentation, there is a link here and a helpful resource. I would strongly recommend printing this document, if you can, maybe hang it out by your desk or in your classroom or just have it as a reference. It is a Google drawing that is a Chromebook reference sheet. So it tells you just some of the different keyboard shortcuts and hacks that you can use with a Chromebook. So um, it's helpful if you kind of make your own copy of it, make adjustments. It's just a really helpful guide for those different reasons. So if you click on any of these buttons and icons, it will tell you how you can use that button. All right. So that is there for you to be able to print and share with your students and practice. Other helpful things. When you log into your Chromebook the first time, you might notice that it's a different login than what you see on your Windows device. It's not a group wise Novell microfocus client login. Um, instead, it probably is asking you for a school um, Google username or Google account name. So you can use a personal Google account if you would want, but if you want to get the experience of what your BCSC students will see, you'll need to sign in using your BCSC Google account. So for teachers, that is your Novell username. So typically the first part of your email. Um, for me, it's my last name and my first letter of my first name. It might be a couple of letters for you, but that's what your username is going to be. But you also have to add in the full end of it. So it's at bcsc.k12.in.us. For our students, though, they have a slightly different Google account set up that gives them a student profile in our whole Google BCSC organization. Otherwise, it'd be really hard to give them access to certain websites because they'd be under the same profile as teachers. So when students go through, they'll need to type in this full username here. So it just adds in the students part of it and that's get, that gets them their account. So if my name is um, Jane Doe, it'd be doej at students.bcsc.k12.in.us. So that's an example. Um, for their password, high school, middle school students make their own password. So that's the same one they use for all of their other accounts they enter there. For elementary school students, it is their, stu their school student ID number followed by BCSC, and that's their password. So that's how they get into their account. If you sign into your Chromebook the first time, it might ask you to link data, and that's a good thing. You want to do that, and basically what that does is that anytime if you open Google Chrome on any other device, so if I am on my laptop here, and then I sign in on my Chromebook like I'm about to here, um, then it will keep track of my history on both sites. I'll have all of my extensions and my bookmarks available on either device. It's not just tied to one computer, it's tied to my Google 
uh, profile, my Google Chrome profile, and it follows me everywhere. So I link my data, it's linked, and I can still get to everything I need. All right, so I'm gonna pause this and I'm gonna start taking over on the Chromebook so you can see that full experience on a Chromebook. It's just some helpful hacks for signing into its learning and accessing other tools when you're using a Chromebook. All right, so welcome back. I'm going to show you a couple of tips now on a Chromebook, how to use it and to navigate it. So this is what the main screen looks like on a Chromebook. If you notice, there's not icons save in the background. Um, Chromebooks are a little different in that there's not things preloaded there for you, except for just some basic G Suite tools here. So to start using my Chromebook, um, I'll open Chrome browser. Again, when you're on a Chromebook, the only web browser you can use is Google Chrome. You notice over here, these are some of my settings. So if I click this, it will show me some options. This is my internet and where I'm connected. Um, I can turn on my nightlight and that just changes the brightness of my device when I'm using it. So ideally it's set so it doesn't hurt your eyes at night. Um, other details and things that are on here. I can change my volume. I can change my screen brightness if I need to. And then I can also see if my battery needs charged and how long until it's fully charged. So I have to keep this plugged in for a little while longer. If I lock my account, that means that it will lock down my screen so that I'm the only one who can use it. I have to sign back in again. This is where I can sign out and this is my power button. So those are just some of the basic things right there in that menu. But I'm going to open Chrome browser here so you can see. Now your screen might be a little bit more of a basic Chrome. This is the background I've set on all of my devices. Um, make sure that when you sign in that you make sure your data is linked. So it should have prompted you that as soon as you open the browser. I already already done that, so it's not showing me that again. Um, but if I hadn't, make sure you do. So again, you can access all of your bookmarks and things that you've saved in your history, no matter what device you're using. So to get into more of the nitty gritty, I'm actually going to move over here so I have some desk space. But when using a Chromebook, there's a couple of helpful things to know. When you wanna to get to It's Learning relatively quickly on a Chromebook, there actually is an It's Learning Chrome app. So to get to that, I'll pull up Chrome or the little beach ball, some people call it. And then up here in this top right corner by my profile picture, there is the waffle menu, which is otherwise known as the Google Apps menu. So if I click Google Apps, I'm actually going to move my video here so you can see I'm going to get in the way. Open my Google Apps. It will show me a few. And if I scroll a little bit further down my page is where its learning is located. And the beauty with this is that Basically, what it's going to do is it's going to ask you to connect your It's Learning account with this Google app, which is a Google single sign-on way of getting in to It's Learning. I have already set mine up, so it's trying to log me in right now. Um, your screen might look a little bit different than mine. I'm a Google, I'm not Google, but I'm a It's Learning system administrator. So every single time I sign in It's Learning, I have to enter a code, which is what it's trying to do right now. But it took me past that phase where I have to enter in my username and password. So it skips a step for me because you don't have to enter in a code when you log into It's Learning, it will just automatically take you through. You'd be in your courses, same thing for your students. So that's just a really quick way to get to It's Learning on a Chromebook. You can also use that feature on a laptop device as well. I can do the same thing on my laptop. So it's kind of a time saver there. All right, so a couple of other helpful things to know when using your Chromebook, just some keyboard shortcuts. My recommendation again is as you go through it and watch this video or the slides is that you pause the video from time to time and practice doing these things on your device. Now I will say some of these skills I'm going to show you in keyboard shortcuts are transferable so you can even use them on your laptop. But if I'm using a Chromebook, the magnifying glass, which is usually if you're using Windows laptop is where the caps lock button would be. The magnifying glass is a way to search the web. So if you click that 
On your Chromebook, it will open up a blank Google search and you can easily just type and go from there. So that's kind of a quick way to use your browser. Other things, the uh, circle arrow looking button across that top banner where usually your function buttons would be, that refreshes your page. Um, the one two down from it is showing all your windows. So if you have opened up different sessions if Google Chrome web browser or have lots of different applications running, that's a really quick way to see all of the ones that you have open and select which one you want to be working in. Your sound buttons are accessible through the bottom right corner, but if you don't feel like going there to change your sound settings, you can also use the buttons across the top to decrease the sound, turn it off completely or increase it. And other helpful thing here to know is that the touchpad, like I've mentioned uh, in a few later slides on this, is that it's very different on a Chromebook than it is on a typical Windows device. Uh, if you want to be able to go um, to different tabs on your browser or even within your device itself, this is one that actually works on Windows too. I go out of my presentation. Um, if I swipe across with three of my fingers on my touchpad, so three of them, it will take me to the next open window that I had. So if I do that here, it asks me which one I want to go to, which is my tab to my right. So if you're in a Chromebook, it will take you to the next open program that you have. So that's just, again, a helpful way of using your Chromebook. There are more resources and guides throughout my presentation, also at the very end if you want to get more. All right, so now I'm going to show you some of the different keyboard shortcuts when you're using a Chromebook because there are some slight differences. The key thing is that if you've probably noticed this when you try to sign out of the Chromebook, but there are some different buttons, namely being there's no caps lock button. There's a keyboard shortcut you would use to have everything in caps. The touchpad on a Chromebook is also slightly different. You've probably noticed that as well. There's not physical buttons there for you to click, so you actually change how you want to use your touchpad depending on the number of clicks the number of fingers you use to click and that kind of bridges that gap between a traditional windows touchpad and how you use one on a chromebook so one of the things that comes very obvious to people if they've been using a windows device for a long time is that there's not a right click button on a chromebook and if you've been trying to even right click with your hand over on the right hand side of the touchpad on a Chromebook, nothing happens. And that's because it's a different way of doing that on a Chromebook. So if I want to have a right click menu that would typically pop up if I was using any Windows device, whether it's my settings or if I want to be able to right click and paste something in a document, the way of doing that on a Chromebook is using two fingers and just tapping on the screen. So I'm going to model that for you. This would be a great time in the video if you're watching this on a Windows device, or if you're watching on a Chromebook, to pause and try and do this yourself so you get some practice. But if I tap, there we go, it brings up my right-click menu that I would typically see if I had right-clicked on a Windows device. So that is how you can kind of change your settings here on a Chromebook and get some practice using the different touchpad features there. One of the other helpful keyboard shortcuts and tips for using a Chromebook is scrolling up and down a page is also a little bit different. Um, you can still use the traditional way that I find myself using quite a bit because I'm a patient I like to scroll really quickly, is if you click on the page and then just use the arrow, you can scroll that way. But an even faster way of scrolling on a Chromebook is by using two fingers. You don't have to click or anything, just using two fingers on the touchpad. And if I go up and down, so I can scroll back down the page as well. So. You can use two fingers to scroll up and down a page on a Chromebook, which is kind of even faster than the method I was using that I thought was fairly fast. Other keyboard shortcut to know when using a Chromebook, and this one actually is not going to work, partly because I already have Chrome open, that's how I'm recording this video, so it won't work. But if you are booting up Chrome for the first time and you wanna open up a Chrome web browser pretty quickly, Alt plus the letter E, it's how you can open up Chrome really quickly just using the keyboard. Other ones, if you like to work in split screen mode quite a bit, whether you're looking at student work and then have 
comments or questions on their side, or you're reading something and taking notes, it's really easy to do that on a Chromebook. There are add-ons and extensions that you can use within the Chrome browser that will do this for you automatically. One of the favorite ones that I like to use, so I don't even have to worry about keyboard shortcuts, is this one. It's called Tap Resize. It's a Chrome extension. You can get it from the Chrome Web Store. It's another tool you can use to split your screen in different ways. You can, you can even do up to four tabs at once with that one. But you can also do that using keyboard shortcuts too. So if I want to have the current window that I have right now um, going to one side of my screen, I'm actually going to change this a little bit, pull it up as a separate window. Um, what I'm going to do is going to do keyboard shortcut here. So Alt and then the square looking parentheses. It's gonna bring that to one side. And if you remember, I had, I'm just gonna do a new window. Um, it will open the other one there, but if I wanted that to be on the left side as well, I could also move it there or move it back. So those are some of the different options you have for looking at Chrome windows in split screen. If I want to see all of my windows on a Chromebook that I have open, it is the show all windows button here at the top. It's the one that has a little window and then lines after it it's across the top bar where usually you'd see some of the function buttons like F6, F7. That's what that one is. If I click it again, it brings back up to the one I was just most recently using. All right, next one is highlighting on a Chromebook. That looks a little bit different as well. Um, there are ways you can click and then move it over. But if you notice again, the touchpad on a Chromebook looks slightly different than on a Windows device. So there's not an actual mouse button. A way that you can quickly practice highlighting on a Chromebook is I'm going to test it here with this little note that I added on my screen. And it is a little hard for me to see because I have my brightness turned up really bright because it's kind of dark in this room. But hopefully you can see it okay on your device. But to highlight something on a Chromebook, uh, you can either double tap to highlight a word or triple tap to highlight everything within that document. So for me, it's just this short little two phrases right here. Um, and you just use one finger, you don't have to use your whole hand or two fingers to do that. So if I am in front of a word, there we go. If I click in the word itself, it will highlight it. If I do the triple tap, highlights everything on my page for me. So that's kind of some quick, uh, easy, I guess it's not a keyboard shortcut, but a mouse pad, touch pad shortcut for a Chromebook. All right, moving right along. Okay, undo button, really helpful to know on a Chromebook. You can also do this on a Windows device too, but if you accidentally move something or delete something on a page, like I'm going to, delete this, All right? Get rid of it. To undo something that you did by mistake, you just do control Z and it brings it back, which is helpful. All right, so if you notice on your Chromebook, you don't have a magnifying glass. Um, sorry, you have a magnifying glass. You don't have a caps lock. You're actually gonna use that magnifying glass to have caps lock on your device. So if you do the magnifying glass and the alt button at the same time. That's how you have caps lock and it will give you notification on there. Um, and if you do alt and magnifying glass again, it gets rid of it. So typed in caps lock there. If I wanna turn that off, I turned it off again and now I'm back to my regular font size, all lowercase. If at any point in time you want to turn off your Chromebook, there are a couple things here to know as well. So if I wanna shut down my Chromebook, there's the power button that's in the top right corner up here. If you're looking at the keyboard, if I wanna turn off my Chromebook, if I also click down here is where I have my power buttons and my main menu, I click here. I can power it down there. If you close the lid, it does not completely shut down your Chromebook. So that's a really key thing to know is that shutting your lid on your Chromebook just puts it into sleep mode. And if you don't regularly shut down your Chromebook, 
and then reboot it, it won't get important updates. It'll get slow. And it's the same for your students too. When I taught middle school, my students all had Chromebooks and a lot of them would forget to regularly just power it down. They would just shut the lid and then plug it in and thought that was powering it off. And then their Chromebook would get really slow or it wouldn't open websites it was supposed to. So just know that you need to get in the habit of powering it down and restarting it just like you would any Windows, iPad or other device. The other way though, to power off your Chromebook is also keyboard shortcut here. I'm not gonna do that right now because I wanna keep this video and I don't wanna lose it, but it is Control, Shift and Q. You hold all of those buttons at the same time, it will put your Chromebook into shutdown mode. So think Q, quiet, go to sleep. It's kind of the way of remembering that shortcut there. So if I want to sleep with my Chromebook, I'll do Control, Shift, and Q. Other helpful things, taking screenshots on Chromebooks is really easy. I actually think it's a lot easier to capture screenshots when you're using a Chromebook than it is a Windows device. So that's something that's a really big win here and why some of our students who have been Chromebook users for a long time really excel in taking screenshots of their work and sending it to you really quickly if they need to. Um, and the way to take a screenshot on a Chromebook, there's a couple of different ways. This is the way that I prefer because I have control over what I'm exactly taking a screenshot of. So I would hold down the shift button, the control button, which are in the bottom right corner. It's all highlighted here on the screen for you to see. And then I also press the show all windows button, which is the one that we looked at earlier to see all the different Chrome tabs I had open. That's actual, that's actually how I take a screenshot as well is by adding control and shift with that. So if I click that, it changes my screen a little bit, but if you notice now I have a little plus button and I'm going to decide what area of my screen I'm going to take a screenshot of. All right. And the great thing about a Chromebook is that it will automatically save it onto your device and your Google Drive. It'll give you a notification. So you can kind of share and use it easily from there um, because Chromebooks are a web-based device, meaning it doesn't necessarily have a device memory. You can't save it in like a documents folder or on the drive of a computer like you can a Windows device. It saves it in your drive, which also means you can access it anytime, anywhere. So that's kind of the great thing with that. That's how you can take a screenshot on a Chromebook. Other things that are helpful and our students are masters at turning these things on, Chromebooks have accessibility settings that differ a little bit than Windows devices and actually provide a few more flexible options than some of our other devices we have out there. So that's kind of a win here as well. To turn on the accessibility options that Chrome has, you'll go to your Chrome main menu, which is not over here. This is the app launcher, it's a little bit different when we think bottom left corner on a Windows device, oh, that's my start menu, that's where I can do everything. Um, over here on the right hand side is kind of the equivalent of a start menu on a Chromebook. That's where all of your control options, your settings, your power buttons are, your user settings as well. That's also where we can find our accessibility settings. So Chromebooks have several accessible settings you can turn on. It can read things out loud. Now I will say that feature um, is being phased out because Google is adding that into their own G Suite tools like slides and docs and things like that. So it's been a little quirky and had some mess ups every now and then. It doesn't always flow as efficiently as you'd like. But other great things that are there, um, select and speak, dictation, high contrast mode so you can change the colors and the contrast on your screen to support any student that might have low vision and need that option. You can use full screen magnifier and it enlarges your screen. It means you have to scroll a little bit more, but it makes things easier to see. Um, and just automatic clicks and on screen keyboard too for a student who may be using a touchscreen Chromebook and needs to tap the screen. So those are some accessibility options that all of us have available to us, just depending on what device we're using, but you have the ability to turn those on. So if I click my bottom right corner here, this is where I could have my accessibility menu. Now, if you click this and you're like, I don't see that little accessibility icon, what do I do? What you need to do is turn on your accessibility options in the settings options. So I actually did that the first time that I had this Chromebook turned on because it wasn't there. So what I would do is I click the settings cog it opens up a settings menu here. And whenever that finishes loading here on the left hand side, if I go to advanced, there is where it says accessibility. And then I turn this on to where it always shows that in my system menu. 
So I always have those options to turn on my accessibility features. So if I click my settings menu again, and I click accessibility, this is where I have all those options to turn things on. So I can turn on select and speak. So if I select anything on a website, it will read it out loud to me. Um, if I turn on dictation, then I can talk into my Chromebook and give my Chromebook commands and it will do those things for me. So it's just a way of giving our students some assistive technology tools within their device and they can turn those on if they need them. Now, if your students are using the Chromebook and they start to have any issues with websites, sometimes um, some flash features on a website don't necessarily like the accessibility settings and you can work through those and turn these settings off if need be. But those are options that our students have to make their device a little bit more personalized and how they need it. All right, so I think we're almost through our slides. So it's always helpful in this presentation if you want to pause and practice and use a few things yourself. If you're using a Windows device, maybe you forgot your Chromebook um, at school or in your classroom or you haven't gotten it yet or it's not powered all the way and you're waiting for it to charge, you don't have to be using a Chromebook to test with some of these features. There's a really awesome Chromebook um, simulator that was made by Google to help people prepare for using Chromebooks if they're teachers or they're trainers that you can actually use on a Windows device. So if I want to use my laptop over here, I can go to this website, which is linked on the Chromebook where it says Chromebook Simulator. And it just gives me a little bit of practice with using a Chromebook and I don't have to be using a Chromebook device to do that. So you can play around with that if you're not able to play, play around with me as I'm going through some of these tips and tutorials for you. And as always, there are other places where you can get more information and help. There are a couple of resources we've linked on here. The first one is a whole list of different Chromebook uh, keyboard shortcuts that you can use in your Chromebook, but also just some Google Chrome shortcuts if you're using a Windows device. There's a few on there for using your Chromebook in the classroom and lesson ideas and ways to use Chromebooks and Google for Education apps like Docs and Slides and Drawings and Forms and Sheets. Uh, there's also resources here. This is slides and training that we gave to parents and families. It's in English and in Spanish, and there also are some resources there in Japanese. It would be helpful for your students and their families if they have any questions about using Chromebooks. And lastly, if you have questions about using a Chromebook and need help or want additional training or need some questions answered, uh, you can always contact me via email. It's linked there. There are some Google tips on the Fresh BCSE Tech blog as well, and some Chromebook tips. And there's also people in your buildings that can help too. Your UDL facilitators, instructional coaches, and your building techs can help answer any questions that you have here in the building and need their help. So good luck and have fun with your Chromebooks and let us know how it goes.